Right, what are we saying, lads? Welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2019 for episode number 44 of the Bahrain McLaren career mode. Uh, today's episode will be potentially a bit shorter, five stages only, as we'll stay in France for first the move on to the newly challenge and then the route d'Occitanie, two stages that I, two, two races actually that I really like to do. Um, so, yeah, just hopefully we can do well. Uh, redeem ourselves after the performances in Suisse and on the Dauphiné, which went great. Uh, and yeah, prepare ourselves before the Tour de France. Thibaut is going to do well. Uh, I'm expecting his fitness peak to be in about 2-3 weeks by the looks of, of, his, uh, of his start, which could be absolutely ideal. So let's start with a good performance at the Mont Ventoux. Overall, a very good day at the office. Plus 3 for Mikel Landa for his final race before the Vuelta. Uh, I don't think he'll be on the Spanish Championship either. Pio Bilbao is there to defend his, uh, well, to show his colors for the final time this season. Same uh, for Chun Kai Feng. But yeah, it's going to be either Thibaut or Mikel Landa to win at the Mont Ventoux today. I don't see anyone competing. Uh, actually, Clément Champoussin could try and maybe do something. Let's hope that Ajay Dezer uh, don't pull off the upset of the century today. And we have started the Mont Ventoux. Pino, Bilbao, Mikel Landa are the three final uh, steps of this rocket, if we could call it a rocket. Um, but Scott Davis is going to be dead. So is Rafael Valls, uh, as it is now Enrico Basalin, our former rider, pacing at the front. Scott Davis, block me one, one more time and I won't renew your contract. And if you don't need a contract renewal, I will release you. 12 riders remaining with 10 kilometers left in this stage. Uh, we have killed a lot of people, let's be, let's be honest, as there is an attack right now from Clément Champoussin on the right hand side of the road. Uh, which therefore means it's time to unleash Thibaut Pinot. It's time to unleash Thibaut Pinot and see what he can do. Even Souza is following the Frenchman, but for how long? Even Souza is showing uh, some signs of weakness. Same for Carlos Verona. Okay, Thibaut Pinot and Mikelanda are going to be pacing, and we're going to try and come back on the right of Aja Dezer. We have TJ Van Garderen in the wheel and Hector Carretero. Uh, Leo Vincent just exploded with uh, Victor Lafay and Peyo Bilbao. Alright, I feel the win is between it's between Landa and Champoussin, 100%. 22 seconds. 22 seconds is the gap between Clément Champoussin and now Mikel Landa. Stewart Pino has finished his job. He's going to be... He, he worked as a teammate today. It's not something he's probably used to. But it's the role he's been given and he, he did it proudly. And that's what we love uh, to, to see in Thibaut. He's even going to be able to probably catch third place if nothing goes too bad. But... The real battle is now at the front. Mikel Landa catching Clément Champoussin. We're even going to ask him to actually catch him. And to try to either stay in the wheel or overtake the Frenchman. What happens if I attack? Is he going to follow? Is he going to follow by the looks of it? For now, he cannot. For now, Clément Champoussin cannot follow the attack of Mikel Landa. The runner-up of last year's Giro, of, of this year's Giro, and the winner of last year's Vuelta. Gone for a second win on the Mont Ventoux after last year's. Come on, 24 seconds. Can we hold off Clément Champoussin, the young Frenchman, 84 mountain. What an amazing stats. Amazing stats for him. And he is catching. He is catching. We're going to move to a different camera angle. Definitely not do that. Come on. Oh, Clément Champoussin is there. He's there. He's in our wheel. He is right in our wheel. Is he going to be able to do anything, though? He's going to start his sprint. Please die. Please die before the line. He isn't. He is just too strong. Clément Champoussin wins at the Mont Ventoux ahead of Mikel Landa. I think if I had stayed in his wheel, we probably would have been, would have been able to, um, to win it, to, to beat him. But I decided to, to, to go for, uh, for the show. And we ended up in second and third place with Mikel Landa and Thibaut Pinot. Clément Champoussin might be a, a, a one to watch as well on the Tour de France this year. There's a lot of people to watch on this Tour de France. Second and third. Let's hope that doesn't happen in the remainder of the episode or in the Tour de France because I'd be very pissed if I lose to Clément Champoussin one more time in my life. And one away for the first stage of this route d'Occitanie between Gignac and saint genies dolt um, we're going to have Thibaut Pinot obviously as our leader, I don't know who's going to the competition uh, on this race. We will have to face Miguel Lopez, Warren Barguil, Benoît Cosneufroy, Steven Kroivike and Rudy Mollard. Alright, we should be able to, to do something good 
Um, on the moment two, we didn't exactly do well. Let's face it, we were actually quite shit. Uh, but I'm hoping to, uh, to have a different outcome today. We have by far the best rider. And yeah, I mean, Thibaut needs to get in shape before the tour. We, we need to get him in shape. And that comes with a, a good performance in the Pyrenees today. Well, we're going to climb uh, the final climb, actually, of saint genis dol for the first time today. We'll do it one more time later on to cross uh, and to well, to cross the finish line and to declare a, uh, a winner. But it is a steep climb, quite narrow, with percentage uh, or gradients, sorry, going uh, up to 10 or even 12%, I think. Uh, let me just check. 13% uh, marks with an average gradient of 8. It gets much more uh, easier towards the end of the climb. Scott Davis is trying to keep up. Uh, if he can, that's incredible. Uh, but I mean, I don't really mind if he gets dropped. As long as we still have Rafael Valls and Thibaut Pinot, we've got Miguel Lopez already at the front here. As Oscar Rodriguez tries to uh, maybe accelerate a bit more. We've got George Bennett for Jumbo Visma. Nero Quin uh, is it Nero? And we have Nero Quintana and Warren Bargill. 82 Mountain for Warren Bargill. Jeez, big stats. Big, big stats. All right, we're going to have to worry about him in, uh, in the final climb, I think. All right, we're going to take the lead of the peloton. Uh, just next to Fabio Aru, who's currently leading. Uh, we've got Oscar Rodriguez, who's going to destroy himself for Miguel Angel Lopez. Lopez already in the wheel of Juan Bargill. Bargill already in my wheel. Uh, now, let's see how we play this out. Because it's going to be yeah, Lopez against me. Although, to be fair, Bargill's got seven, uh, 82 and 78. He could definitely be a, a worthy opponent, as there is a huge acceleration, actually, from the uh, former French champion. Is that Thomas Pitcock holding on? Jeez. Go on, Thomas. Uh, we're currently getting dropped here. Thibaut is not having a great month of June. Now we're going to follow Rudy Mollard, try to catch up to his wheel. We're going to do so, but Rudy Mollard is about to die. We're going to increase our rhythm, use our gel, move away because we're getting blocked by Benoît Cosnefroy. Miguel Lopez seems to be in a great shape. So is Warren Barguil. We're going to launch our sprint. It might be a bit early. Uh, it is slightly early. It's going to be a win for, for Miguel Angel Lopez today. Ahead of Barguil. We're going to come home in third place. Okay. I mean, I said I was the, the best rider here. I might not be. Right, so win for Miguel Lopez. Good thing is that we don't have to worry about the gaps, uh, so we end up in third place. We're going to be, okay, third of the GC, because everyone's uh has now a, a a clone, I guess. Okay. Well, we're six seconds down. Up next, Saint-Gaudens Massub. It's a hilly stage with apparently a circuit till the end. We can try to do something there. Stage 2 of this Route d'Occitanie between saint gaudens and uh, Masseub, I think. Alright, let's take a look at this. There's definitely something doable. There's definitely something doable there. I think we can try to pace in like this climb and see what happens then. Alright, I mean, I've got nothing to lose. Okay, uh, we've made a little move. We've just started to pace with Scott Davis. And by the looks of it, we've made some damage. Now, these guys will most likely come back now. And so will they, so will they sorry. Uh, but it's good to know that we are able to drop them. And we've dropped them with Scott Davis. That's another good thing. 24 kilometers re uh, remaining. Uh, is that the finish line? That is the finish line. Okay, good to know how the finish looks like. Um, okay, Rafael Valls just decided to yeet himself out of the group and go with Thibaut and Phil Bauhaus. Somehow, I did not see that coming. I, I don't know. Uh, come on, Phil, mate, just hold on. Just tr uh, try not to get blocked by Romain Combo, though. Uh, but we are working quite well here. We are working quite well. We've dropped a few guys. Phil Bauhaus is going to start the downhill portion in, leading in, in first place. Knowing that he could well and truly fight for the dub. Um, okay. I mean, he's not going to be able to fight because I've got a, a sheer lack of energy. But, I mean, if we take Thibaut in leading position, 
It's either going to it's going to be Kostner for me, but they're going to take the wheel of field by house. We're going to start the sprint early with Thibaut Pinot. It's going to be Tony Urel against Thibaut Pinot, and the win today is going to be for the leader of Byron McLaren ahead of Tony Urel. Benoît Kostner brings them third place, which means that we are going to take the lead in the general classification ahead of Miguel Angel Lopez uh, for four little seconds. Get in. All right, no gaps whatsoever, uh, but. A win nonetheless. Phil is bringing him a very nice 6th position. I didn't expect that from him. Uh, they counted gaps from the 17th position onward, which is great. Uh, GC wise, even though there's everyone, everyone's got a copy, uh, we are moving into 1st place ahead of Miguel Lopez. Uh, and there's already quite some gaps from 5th place onwards. That's good, as we now, I think, have Les Mondolmes. Yep, which is going to be a very tough stage between Prabon Repos and Les Mondolmes. Alright, it's a very tough stage that awaits the riders today. It's a 0 for Thibaut Pinot. Okay, could be worse. Could be a minus 3 uh, or a minus 2, like Rafael Valls and Griga Bolle. Uh, but we're not going to have any help whatsoever in the mountain. <laughs> like, we're going to struggle in uh, in the final climb. They're not named, that's shit. Uh, but in the climb of, uh, of Les Mondelbe, we will we will struggle. That is for sure. Uh, we'll also struggle in this one. All right, well then, uh, let's tr let's hope that despite the minus two, Rafael Valls can be some sort of a some more of a help. Oh, we're approaching the summit of the uh, Col du Chula. I had to uh, to go and check on the internet what call it what what climb it was, uh, but we currently have a two minute twenty six breakaway uh, or breakaway in the lead, I guess, uh, with Ryan Taramae. Myers from Jumbo Visma, Vigar Steklangen, Pierre Roland, David La Cruz, François Bidard, Nance Peters. Uh, Cyril Tomine, hmm. not sure about the name. Nicolai is trying to chase them. Uh, then Thomas de Grand, uh, Christian Munoz, Vangstadt are dead. Alexis Jamos is dead, and Alexis uh, and uh, Thibaut Pinot, sorry, is the one leading the peloton right now. We're just placing at 69 as there's a puncture for Jan Polank. Uh, not exactly the best of timing for uh, for the Slovenian. When Bargil started really early, 16 kilometers remaining, and Warren Bargil has already made a move. Okay. Interesting. Um, you're going to Lopez. You may want to do something. No? What if I attack? You'll follow at least. Wait, where does Alex Aranburu go now? Wait, so they let Bargil go, but like any, no one is going to let me go. Alright, it's not great. Uh, but we're going to catch Miguel Angel Lopez. I mean, Miguel Angel Lopez is going to catch us. Uh, we're just, just going to relay, I guess. Oh, he, oh wow, he's actually killing us. Good. Good. He's pacing 9G. Good, brilliant. Bargil with maybe uh, the move of the of the race right now. I had not seen that coming. I truly did not. But we're going to stay with uh, Miguel Angel Lopez in the downhill portion. Rest. Re recover some energy. Knowing that, I mean, um, Bargil will do the same. And hopefully we can attack in uh, the final climb towards uh, towards Les Mondolmes. Hopefully we'll have some energy to fight for. We have uh, Steven Krovac just behind us. So the top four of the GC is currently at the front. We're going to let Miguel Real Lopez pace. I'm not going to do anything. Use your energy, fam. Don't drop me. Thank you. Uh, actually, Miguel Real Lopez is using a lot of energy. Because the gap is now only 17 seconds as we start the climb towards Les Mondolme. We're going to catch Warren Barguil. Hopefully. One day. Maybe not. We're going to take the relay of Miguel Real Lopez. We're just going to make sure that we can catch Warren. There we go. And it is a three-man group. But Miguel Real Lopez cannot follow. Miguel Real Lopez just paced too much just be uh, before. And he can't follow us. Warren Bargill attacks us. Come on, let's follow. Come on, Thibaut. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Stay in his wheel. Oh, we could not follow. We just didn't have the legs. We just didn't have the legs. Uh, Warren will take the win today, I think. And we're going to come in second. Uh, Warren looks kind of dead. But we are way too far down. It's a win to the Les Mondolmes. For the leader, Avarka Samzek, the former French champion, and he's going to get the yellow jersey of this route d'Occitanie before the final stage. Warren Vargil wins today's third stage, 30 seconds ahead of Thibaut Pinot, 
and more than two minutes ahead of Miguel André Lopez, who truly, truly lost it. He did way too much effort in the climb, or uh, actually no, in, in the flat portion towards the final climb, uh, and he's going to pay a big price. The leader of Astana really, really struggling. George Bennett overtaking Kroivaik as well. Wow. Maybe uh, a change of leadership in uh, the Young Bovisma team prior to the final stage. 27 seconds is the gap that Warren Bargill got today. We were 8 seconds ahead of him on the GC. We're now going to be 19, 19 plus 4. 23 seconds down. Quick maths. We're out here. Uh, but yeah, the gaps are massive when it comes to uh, the rest of the peloton. Lopez, 203 down. John Bennett, 250. Uh, Kroivaik, 312. Thomas Pitcock coming home in a very respectable 7th position. Uh, Nara Quintana losing more than 7 minutes, but to be fair, actually, no, more than 6 minutes, but as his leader won the race. Alright, 23 seconds is what we'll have to catch on the final stage. Luchon, well, I mean, actually, Aro, Luchon, Hospice de France. Let us go. And to start off this final stage, it is a zero that awaits Thibaut Pinot uh, before going to Luchon, Hospice de France. We'll have the Port de Ballest just before. Um, now... I'm going to try and go in the breakaway with Rafael Valls, catch Pino in the downhill. I know, attacking in the downhill with Thibaut Pino isn't exactly the smartest thing. Um, but if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I, I, at least I'll have tried something and then uh, if everything fails, we still have Hospice de France to try and defeat good, good old Warren. Uh, I've lost to Clément Champoussin in, in the Ventoux. I'm done losing to French people. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm not going to lie, it's been tough being in this peloton. The rhythm has just been mental from day one. Uh, a lot of riders, I mean, I'm actually managed to come back. Uh, we've had one little break of about 15 kilometers, uh, and then Thomas Pitcock decided to attack again. Now, uh, I'm no specialist, but I feel like Thomas Pitcock might have like thrown away his seventh place in the GC because he's out of energy in this 36 kilometers remaining. That's a shame. And by the way, for the final climb of this Route d'Occitanie, uh, we've got Nero Quintana currently leading 11 riders as there's an acceleration from Carlos Verona on the right-hand side of the road. Is anyone going to follow? Uh, Quintana chases him, actually. Quintana chases him. We're going to take position behind Warren Barguil. Okay. 10 riders in this group. Sebkos, Guerrero and Kudus won't come back. Reichenbach and Rudy Mollard just managed to come back, but I'm not sure about their level of fitness. Rudy Mollard looks to be uh, slightly out. And as Quintana is currently trying to set up a rhythm, we're going to attack with Thibaut. We're going to attack with Thibaut Pinot. It's not the toughest part of the climb, I'm aware. Carlos Veron is the one chasing me. Carlos, mate, why? Why would you attack now? And uh, we're not going to be able to drop Nero Quintana. Okay, we've, we, we've used... Our first chance in this stage. That was the first one. We'll have one more later on. Uh, but if we want to get a 23 second gap on Ryan Bargill, we're going to need to like, <laughs> take that chance and do well with it. Bargill, Verona in the lead. Wait, wait, no. what do you mean, Thibaut? Thibaut, how did you get dropped? You were pacing 85 in the fucking wheel of Kroivike, man. Uh, right, well, it looks like Bargil is going to do an Enric Mass on me and just bully me on every single mountain stage. It better not be like that on the Tour de France. It really better not be like that. Because Verona's dead, George Bennett's dead, Thibaut has energy, Miguel Lopez and Kroivak are going to try and catch the leader of the race. Uh, but I don't know what I've been doing with Thibaut on the Dauphiné and on this race, but we've been absolutely useless. Bargil takes the win ahead of Kroivak, Lopez, Thibaut Pino in fourth place. Carlos Verona in fifth. Um, Jen, I'm. It's one of the worst episodes I've had. Only one win on a on continental races. Like what the fuck? I've got no words. Like none, none whatsoever. We're just shit. I've come to that conclusion on my own, but we're just shit. We got battered by Henrik Mas on the, on the Dauphiné. We got battered by Clément Champoussin in the Ventoux. And we're now getting battered by Warren Barguil in the Route d'Occitanie. 
And oh my god, we've lost every jersey to Warren on the final day as well. I just don't know what to do or to say here. We're just yeah, trash. But anyway, this is why we're going to wrap this episode up. If you've enjoyed it, then please do leave a like down below. Uh, if you're new around here, then please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done that already. Next episode will be the National Championships. Uh, we'll do the time trial in one episode and uh, the road races in another. So, yeah, I shall see you two in two days for episode number 45. But I've been back. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you guys. And goodbye. Pull up, pull up in the gold I'm bleeding. All them other man they feeding, I don't wanna go bombi Them I don't know what I do when I go from mealing Leading the pack in black and I'm on with the bad Snapping with a phone and dab, I'll stop a man with a duster Put him in a drip and sip blockbuster